In this video, we'll look at how we can blend between different character animations. We'll do this by modifying the animation weights of each animation through a coroutine. So let's get started. Here we are in Visual Studio Code. We're in a class called Anim Blending. And we're going to be blending between two different animations of our character blending over here in our models folder. This character has a idle animation and a running animation. And we're going to be going over how we can blend between these two back and forth. So going from idle to run and from run back to idle. And we'll do this by modifying the weights of these animations through a coroutine. So let's take a look at our create character. Now in this method, we're grabbing the meshes and the animation groups from our character blending. Again, this is in the models folder. If you want to follow along with the same code, you will find a link to the code repository in the description. I'm using the meshes to rotate the character to face the camera. And then down here, just to make it easier to understand which animations we're using, I have assigned idle and run to their respective animation groups. Now, the way that we're going to be modifying the blending of these animations is through the animation weight. So how do we assign a weight to idle or run? If we type out idle dot set, you should find when it says set weight for all animatables. And you'll see this takes in a weight, which is a number. Now the weight is gonna be a value between zero and one. With a weight of one, we're saying that this animation has a higher weight or a higher influence over other animations that may have a lower weight. So think of this as applying influence to other animations. Now what we're gonna be doing is we want to modify the weight between idle and run. And to make it look like we're actually blending between these two different animations, what we're gonna do for the idle animation is that we're gonna be modifying this weight going down. So we're gonna decrement this value between one all the way down to zero, whereas with the run, we're gonna increment that value. And we're gonna do the same thing in reverse. So going from run back to idle. So one weight is going down, one weight is going up. Now we're gonna do this through something called a coroutine. So I'm gonna remove this here from now. And we're gonna create our coroutine down below. For those of you that are not familiar with what a coroutine is, you can think of this as a block of code where we can use this for say timing. I've used coroutines in Unity for creating a spawn timer. So if I wanna have an enemy spawn every three seconds or a minute, a coroutine will help me do that. So let's take a look at how we can write out a coroutine. It's a little bit different. So let's start off with an asterisk and then you provide the name of this. And we're gonna write this out similar to how we would write out a method to start. So I'll call this animation blending. Now you'll notice that I have not provided a type for this quite yet. We'll take a look at that in a moment. So what do we need for the animation blending? Well, like I mentioned before, we're going to be modifying weights for both the idle and the run. So the idle animation is gonna have a different weight than the run animation. So while one is going up, the other is going down. So we need to include a couple of local variables here for the current weight and a new weight. Okay, so the current weight is the animation that currently has this weight. So we're going from idle. That'll have a weight of one to start off. And the new weight is going to be a value that we're gonna be incrementing. So this one is going to be going down while this one is going up. So once we're done with the coroutine, this should essentially be reversed. We're gonna see this value go down to zero and this value go all the way up to one. We'll use a while loop to check to see if our new weight has reached a value of one. So while new weight is less than one, I then want to increment new weight, and then I want to decrement current weight. Now we're gonna increment our new weight by a very small value, so 0 0.01. And the reason why we're doing this is because we're gonna be doing this over every frame. So we want a very small value, so we can actually see the blending happening over time. If you increment this by a very large value, say one, or 0.5, it's gonna be almost an abrupt change. So we're still not getting that blend that we want. So by incrementing this by a value of 0 0.01, we get a nice gradual blending between these different animations. Now we're doing this with new weight, we're incrementing this. We also need to do the same thing with the current weight, but in reverse. So we're gonna decrement the current weight. Okay, so current weight minus equals 0 0.01. 
Now we're not just incrementing or decrementing these values. We also need to assign them to the idle and the run animation. What I'm gonna do here is I wanna use both of these animations. So I'm gonna pass these in to the animation blending coroutine as a parameter. So we'll say two anim, and this will be an animation group. And then from anim. So the two anim is the animation that we're going to. That's pretty self-explanatory. The from anim is the animation that has the weight that's gonna be decremented. So in this case, when we're starting off, this is gonna be the idle animation and this is gonna be the run animation. So I wanna first ensure that I'm playing the run animation. So the two anim. So two anim dot play. And we'll just set this to looping for now. And the reason why we're playing this up here is because if we adjust the weights, but the animation is not playing, well, it doesn't really matter because the animation is not playing. So it's not gonna have any kind of influence over any other animation. So we play two anim out here. And then down here, we can say two anim dot, and this is the animation that we wanna have increment its weight value. So we're gonna say two anim dot set weight for all animatables. And this is gonna be the new weight. Let's also do the same thing for the from anim, but in this case, we're just modifying the weight with the current weight in this case. So from anim dot set weight for all animatables, and this will be the current weight. Now, one of the most important parts about creating a coroutine is a yield. So we'll write out yield at the very bottom here. And by using yield, we're essentially gonna be waiting a single frame. Now remember, if your game is running at 60 frames per second, yield is gonna be one of those frames. So we're saying, we're gonna go through this once, twice, however long it takes until we reach a value of one. This is gonna wait just one frame and then continue looping through this over and over again. That's why we use such a small value for these. Now you can see right when I added in the yield, we are gonna get a little bit of an error up here. So TypeScript is complaining because we don't have a return type. Now for a coroutine, there are a few different ways to do this. I could say iterable and just say void. But in our case, we're gonna be using something a little bit different. So let's jump back up to the create character. The way that we're gonna be calling this is through Babylon. And we're going to be using something called run coroutine async. So this not seen dot on before render observable dot, and we're going to look for the run coroutine async. Now, if you take a look at this, you can see it requires a coroutine, which is a type of async coroutine void. So that is the type we're going to be using with our coroutine down below. Okay, now we can pass this in up above. So I'm gonna say animation blending. And remember, we need to pass in the animations. So we're gonna be starting off with the run animation first, and then the idle. Okay, great. Now I don't want this to run automatically. I wanna be able to see the blending. So we're gonna add in another thing in here to check to see if we're pressing something on our mouse. So once again, we're gonna say this.scene. Dot on pointer down. And I want to check to see if evt.button equals, and in this case, I'm checking for a value of one, which is middle mouse. If I press my middle mouse button, then I want to create the transition or the blending between the run and the idle. Let's save this. And let's give this a quick test in the browser. Okay, so there's the character. They're playing in the default idle animation. Note that we did not stop that when we first imported this. So that is the default animation that we'll be playing. Now, if I use my middle mouse button in here, you can see we slowly transition into the running state. Now you can increase or decrease how fast you want that to be. So you can increase or decrease the weights if you want that to be faster or slower. Now we have already gone over how to go between idle and run. Let's take a look at using this in reverse. So if I stop my character, I then want it to go from the running state to the idle state. So going back into the create character method, since we already created the coroutine, which allows us to assign the animations to and from, it's actually fairly easy to modify this to go in reverse. So this time I'm gonna be checking for another button. I'm gonna be checking to see if I use my left click, which will be evt.button equals zero. I'll just copy all of this. And I'll say if evt.button equals zero, 
I then want to swap these out. So now this will be idle. And then this will be run. Okay, so we're going from run to idle and now from idle to run. Let's give this one more quick test. Okay, so we're playing the idle animation. Use middle mouse, go to running, use left click, and we blend back into the idle animation. So there you have it, a very simple and easy way to blend between different animations using a coroutine.